Welcome everyone, I'm Professor Brock Hedegaard with the University of Minnesota Duluth. This is the first in a new series on structural analysis. We'll be talking about loads today. So let's say you're a structural engineer. You're designing the next building to grace the skyline. You're working with an architect who's thinking about the form and function of that building while you are thinking about the physics. So what are the forces of nature that we're up against here? First, we have to contend with gravity. And there are several components to gravity. So first of all, we have the building weight itself. Now we call this dead load and we denote it as capital D. As you can see, that can be a significant portion of our building, especially with concrete structures. Although sometimes we have some more lightweight steel structures or aluminum structures. Next for gravity, we can also consider the live load. So the live load is the gravity loads due to occupancy of the building. So that can be people, furniture, and other things that can potentially move around. We're gonna call that one capital L. On the roof, sometimes we split this off and we call this something a little bit different, L sub R, our roof live load, but it's the same concept as a live load. It's just treated differently in our design codes. Next, we have snow load. So if you're from up north, this can be a very large component of your gravity loading, followed up by rain loads. Rain loads are typically important for flat roofs, especially ones that can accumulate ponding on top then your rain load can be a significant component. Now those last three that we discussed, rain, snow, and roof live load, only one of those will tend to control and we'll consider that as the roof load. Now let's move away from gravity for a little bit and we'll think about some other types of loads that act laterally rather than down on our structure. So the primary lateral load for most regions around the country is going to be a wind load. This can be due to hurricanes, tornadoes, or otherwise storm events. We'll call this load W. And if you're in a seismic active region, then you'll also have a seismic load or earthquake load, and we'll call this load E. Now, given all these loads, there are three main contexts that we can place these in as engineers. So first we'll have to think about serviceability. This is day-to-day -day operation of our structure, and we need to make sure that our structure is operating in a serviceable fashion. Now, for the most part, serviceability does not really have a lot to do with safety. Most of it is to do with, for example, cracking, corrosion, deflections, things that will impact the ability of that structure to be used, but will not make the structure fall down. Now, these loads tend to be smaller and we call these service level loads. Up next, and what is the primary concern for many engineers is the strength case. So this is really looking at failure of our structure. And we're going to be using something called factored loads here to account for the larger loads that are going to be applied in this failure state. Lastly, we'll look at extreme events. This is really looking at the integrity of our structure after we've had some damaging event. So in this case, we're assuming damage has happened because we've had some extreme event, for example, a blast or an impact. And we know our structure is probably not going to survive it but we definitely want to make sure that life safety of the occupants is our primary concern. So we need to make sure that the structure stays intact and does not collapse in this case. So let's revisit this strength case. What are these factored loads? So factored loads can come in a variety of combinations and we don't just put all the loads possible on our structure at the same time. We have something called seven deadly load combinations that we can consider for strength design. Now, each of these load combinations has a particular load that will be controlling. So for example, we can look at dead load controlling, live load controlling, our roof load controlling, which could be roof live load, snow load, or rain load, wind, seismic. And then there's two special cases down here for uplift, where we actually minimize the amount of self weight to get the most risk for overturning or uplift of our structure. Now you'll notice each of these cases has some different load factors associated with it. So when we're looking at the strength case, we're increasing our expected or service level loads by some load factor. And those load factors will vary by load combination. So for example, if we're looking at dead load only, we'll increase our dead loads by 40% to account for this factor of safety. Now in other cases where we're combining loads, these load factors are going to represent two different things. So first, they'll represent the uncertainty that we have in the load itself. So a lower factor denotes something that we know relatively certainly, 
whereas a higher factor denotes a load that we do not know with as much certainty. For example, live load, because it's dependent on the occupancy, and we don't really know how that structure is going to be used in the future. Secondly, these load factors are accounting for the probability that multiple loads can happen at the same time, and that we would have the worst case scenario for all those loads simultaneously. So that's a pretty rare thing, and there's actually quite a bit of statistics backing up these load factors. So when we see that there's a 0.5 load factor applying to the snow load, it's because we're expecting, probabilistically, that we will not have the maximum snow load at the same time as we have a maximum live load. Now, ultimately, we're going to check our loads using something called load and resistance factor design. Our loads are incorporated into U here, and those are, of course, the factored load combinations that we looked at. Now, on the other side of this equation, we have a capacity, R sub N, and that capacity is going to depend on our structural form, what materials we're using for that structure, and etc. And last but not least, we have one final factor of safety. Sometimes we call this the fee factor, but it's really a strength reduction factor that gives us both sides of this coin load factor and resistance factor or strength factor design. So as we proceed with structural analysis, we're going to first concentrate on our demand side. So these are the demands that the forces of nature are going to put on our structure. And later, once we talk about concrete design or steel design, then we can discuss the capacity side of our structure. And of course, we always want to ensure that our capacity reduced by some factor of safety is greater than our demands, increased by another type of factor of safety. And that is our introduction to loads for structural analysis. Please subscribe and I hope to see you next time.